Mission and Life Skills and Worship Center, can we give the Lord a praise? Anybody got a praise in their heart this morning? Anybody want to lift him up? Come on, put your hands together. Help me lift up the name of Jesus, for he's worthy. Anybody got a praise in their heart out there? Come on, I can I get it some noise. Anybody got a good praise? Come on, let's sing a couple songs to the Lord before the word of God comes forth. So just put your hands together like this. Come on, everybody. There's a praise.
Come on, he's been just that good. See, we in the church, we don't like to praise him unless he's doing what we want him to do. But can I got anybody who got some stuff upside down? <laughs> but say, I, but I will bless him anyhow. Come on, come on, come on. Anybody got some stuff on that's upside down in your life? Come on, I know everybody thinks that great. Learn how to 
just get low. Your spirit just gets low. But I've learned. Just one more time, open your mouth. Now don't do nothing, don't do because I said it. But run your head back and just bless it real quick. Come on, open your mouth and just learn how to run your head back. Come on, and just learn how to bless it. Come on, if he heard from them, he'll hear from me.
Let your shalom, let your spirit, let your spirit of peace rest on us. Whatever we came in with, we have to do. There's no way we can leave without your peace. Make it real to us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. before you long, but I do want to this particular woman with an issue of blood is of a very familiar scripture and it's been preached so many times in so many so different many ways, ways. we've we all gleaned from it so many different things so this morning I want to yet glean something else from it for your hearing I want to talk about radical faith Talk about it. I want to talk about doing it in a different way. Talk about it, Pastor. If you've been praying about it, you got to do it in a different way now. My, my. Yeah. If you've been crying about it, you got to do it in, in a, a different, different way now. Talk about radical faith. Yeah. Yeah. Radical faith pushes you. God allows situations to linger so that you can come out of how you normally do it and push you to another level of faith to do it in a way that you never thought to do it. Do, do it in a way that, that, that it may even be embarrassing to do it. Uh -huh. yeah. To do it in a way that it may be seen shameful to do it. Because uh -huh. it could lead to many different interpretations when people see you radically praising God. Yeah. Uh -huh. Everybody wants to fill in your story. Everybody oh. wants to say why you crying. Everybody oh. wants to say why you lifting up your hands. Everybody wants to say why you laying prostrate on your floor. Everybody. Oh. Everybody. But sometimes, how many of you know, sometimes I just need to worship. Oh. It, it, it's not always about my trouble. Sometimes I just need to worship. Sometimes I need to worship him a little differently than the way I always worship. Because in the end, no matter what I go through, if I don't worship, I don't survive anything. So this woman now, let's unpack her just for a second. This woman, she had an issue. The Bible says that she had an issue of blood. And the Bible mentions that she has it. She had it. 12 years. That's an interesting number, 12. And I'll let you know later on how I see that number because usually I look at the number and the meaning and the definition, but I saw it differently this time. And then and, 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 and she was broke. Yeah. Come on now. My God. All oh, y'all should have jumped up. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> she was broke. Talk about it. When the Bible say you broke, talk about you it. Bro. You broke. You ain't American broke. American broke is different. American broke, you go get food stamps. American broke, you go get you a check. American broke, you go get some clothes. American broke, you go to the Salvation Army. But when the Bible says you broke, you broke. You broke. You don't have another source. You don't have anybody that's going to give. So the Bible says that she was broke. And she was broke not from gambling. Talk about it. For living life seriously. She was broke because of her medical bills. Yeah. I got everybody in the house and say, I, I, I wasn't doing crazy with my money. I just had something to happen. Things happen. Things happen. I just had something to happen. Don't look at me like I'm this bad and strong my money. Just something happened. That's it. She had an issue. And she also carried a social burden. Come on. Because y'all know the saints are something else. With something yeah. else. To deal with when please. you really got an issue. Come on. She could not socially deal because of her issue. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I understand that we make much to do about nothing. Right. I do. Right. But that's not where I want to come from. This right. Time. Because sometimes, y'all don't hit me, don't throw no shoes at me. My God. Sometimes it is because of what we did do. Say it, Pastor. Yeah. Yeah. It is so. Yeah. It is so. Yeah. Is so. They're not talking about you because you were sitting on an arch with an angel. <laughs> you gave them something to talk about. To talk about. Come on now. We got and people it. talk. Yeah. And they do. And they will. And they do. Come on if now. You, you talk. Talk about it. Come in that situation. So she tried doctors, but she could not get healed. She tried doctors. Right. So she sick, singly. Come on. Got an issue of blood flowing here. Come on. She goes to the doctors. 
She went to more than one doctor. Because right. you don't spend all your money on one doctor. Because on after a while, if they're not coming up with the remedy, I and mean, they gave you something, you're going to Talk another. And you're going to another. Talk and you're going to another. She done ran out of doctors in the lane. So all her money on. She can't even go to the doctor no more because she don't have no insurance. Talk about That's no problem. You don't have no money, you can't get in to see the doctor. Come on, Pastor. She was broke. Y'all got to get that. Bro. So, so something bigger, listen to this, something bigger than money was happening in her life. Come on yeah. now. Bigger than money. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting ready to go where we don't want to go. Uh -oh. I'm getting ready to go where we don't teach want us, to go. Teach us, teach us. Something bigger than money is going on in your life. Something bigger yeah. than the issue is going on in your life because the thing about it is that God did give doctors ability right. and knowledge right. to be able to teach us and, right. and do surgery on us and right. heal us and right. make us whole and do all of that. He did, but they couldn't help her. But they couldn't help. And why couldn't they help her? Because something bigger is going on. Come on, Pastor. Talk about it. Oh, my God. My God. What was the bigger thing going on? She had a soul issue. My God. You better hear me. Mm -hmm. Your physical ailment is a result of a primary soul ailment. Mm -hmm. Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. yes. my, my, my. Nobody can help you. You better read the telltale signs. Mm -hmm. Nobody can do nothing about your condition. Read the telltale signs. Then it must not have originated in my body. Holy Ghost. My God. Teach us. It must have originated there in sources not known to man. Talk about it. Because sometimes God's got to get our attention in a radical way. Say that, yes, Pastor. To produce a radical praise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my. Oh my. Mm -hmm. So the man element stopped her body from doing what it's supposed to do. You sitting up there, one thing after another is hopping off in your body. And you're doing nothing <coughs> more. You're going to wait till it culminates and becomes something so big to go to doctors and find out they, not, they can't do nothing about it. Your first level, the Bible tells us, even if they're sick among you, go to the elders, but the church don't do that anymore. Talk mm -hmm. about it, Pastor. Right. Because the reason why it tells you that is because if you come to the elders and they pray, if there's something to do with your soul, if there's something to do with your soul, that's when healing will take place at that level. But some of us are too proud. Come on now. We can't let nobody know what we're going through. Come on, Pastor. Do you know there are people who are ashamed to say, I have COVID? Talk about it. Yes, they are. Because you know how society is. How do you make something bad Come on now. and ostracize somebody for something that's happened to the entire world? To the entire yeah. world, Pastor. But the church is still messed up in that regard. Talk about it. Still messed up. Won't even go to the church as the church. The innocent routine for prayer, because they don't want nobody to know. Come on. Nah, 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 nah. Well, over two million, three million people have died from, they don't want nobody to know. Because they think they curse. Help us. Help us. Help us, God. Help us. Mismanaging this whole moment. Wow. Wow. So now, I had to ask myself the question, Lord, what stopped this moment? What did she do? <laughs> Holy God. I need mean, help. Come on now. Because you know I'm subject to sin. Right, right. Oh, I'm saying, y'all, I said, me. Talk, talk, talk about it, Pastor. I'm subject to sin standing here. Come on, Pastor. Come you better on. watch me. You better always be in prayer about me. I'm a sick one. Oh, how do I do that? Come on. <laughs>
to take on this woman. Nobody. So it's a, it's a y'all, you're going to be mad at me. It's a different message when everybody is ostracizing you. Talk about it. Yes, it is. I'm telling you, it's something else going on. They ostracized her because guess what? Help Jesus, help me Jesus. They ostracized her because if they were to deal with her, it affected their worship. Talk about it, Pastor. Wow. 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 So they said that she was considered unclean. And if you're unclean and you go to someone's home or you touch them, then that house or that person or that family is unclean. So they can't participate in none of the worship that goes on. Yep. Wow. What have you done? Oh God. That don't nobody. What have you done that everybody said if I deal with you, my worship is affected? My God. Oh my, my God. Holy Ghost. That's why I can't deal with you. Because when I deal with you, you go talk about every saint in the church. Come on now. And then when I go in the church, I'm looking at everybody funny. I don't even know. Because you are toxic. Talk about it. All I did was walk through the church. I was brand new. Come on. Holy Ghost. And I, I encountered you all of a sudden. I know this one is that one. I don't even know their name. You just said this one about that one. Right. You just said you ain't said nothing about your toxic self. Right. Woo. 
She's aware. Come on, Pastor. She's aware. Yes. She knows she what she's done. Yes. And she knows what she's done is because she does not dare approach Jesus. You hear me? She doesn't dare approach him. Come on now. In this, I am who I am, and I'm coming to you for healing. Come on now. When she recognized something about herself in that moment, she recognized this man is so holy that all I see is my uncleanness. Talk about it. See, the problem with the church of the living God is that we don't see our own uncleanness. And you approach God not in honor, not in humility, not in respect, but you approach him in an arrogant manner. As though he is supposed to do this for you. Come on now. So, at least she understood that she wasn't worthy. Because that's the first thing you got to know. I'm not worthy, God. I'm not worthy. So, 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 what was going on before the issue? Uh-huh. Because I want to know. Here's what baffled me. I'm just giving y'all what baffled me. And what baffled me, Quincy, what baffled me was she didn't have not one friend. Holy Ghost. Who knew for 12 years. Holy Ghost. If anybody needed to see Jesus. Holy Ghost. She needed yes. to see Jesus. And I thought it strange because I know of four friends. Come on, Pastor. The two that friends. It's in the scriptures. Lay them on a thing. Come on, Pastor. Cop. It's in the scriptures. Couldn't get in the house. Come on, Pastor. Dug a hole in the field. And put him down there. Because they said he needs to be killed. He needs Jesus to heal him. You're talking well. I know a can that long. I got her devil worshiper, manager, a junk gun dog. But she had a dog. She turned around and looked at him. Okay, okay, but will there be some crumbs that you can give to the dog? Ruff, ruff. Call me whatever you want to call me. But I'm coming for this thing. You want to do this thing. He's looking for radical faith. Undercover faith don't work for Jesus. Nicodemus faith does not work for Jesus. You going through and you too proud, you holding your head up in church like it's all right. You coming to the place where power of prayer is happening. Amen. <sighs> Glory. My gosh. No friends. No one who says 12 years this woman is a candidate. No one considered her. <sighs> and I thought to myself, maybe because she never showed herself really interested in Jesus. Maybe before Jesus, you know, there was the tabernacle. Come on now. Maybe she even talked about everything in the tabernacle. So they figured she didn't even like the tabernacle. Come on now. So I know she ain't got nothing but Jesus because nobody considered her. Mm -mm. Nobody considered her. Uh, yeah. So now we're at this place that nobody considers her. Nobody took her to the church, per se, to get healed. She has an issue. Guess what? People accepted her disposition. Right. You say something long enough, people say that's how she is. Right, right, They right. will accept you as how you present yourself. Right. You present yourself as a gossip, guess what they're going to say? You're, You're a gossip. gossip. They're going to present you as that. Gossip are not interested in salvation. Gossips are not interested in deliverance. Because you can't have a mind for that. And, did I tell y'all last week no gray areas? Come on now. Oh, we going to get ready for Jesus when he cracked that sound. Right. Because you got to be ready, you all. And we're living in the gray in this last hour. And there is no gray. Is no so if we're living in the gray and there is no gray, where does that lead us when the church is called up to meet him in the air? Where does that leave us? Here in the what? Here in the ground. So he said, I got to deal with her and who she is. Now, this is really bad. This is really bad. Talk about it. Her friends didn't have no friends to help her. 
They had a temple that stepped in and helped, the elders in the temple wasn't praying for, wasn't doing anything. Terrible thing though, y'all, when Jesus don't even know you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that goes. Now, I read this Bible. Mm -hmm. And Jesus oh, will approach God. someone, come up to them, understand their healing, know what to do, and heal them, and they feel comfort in that. Mm -hmm. This situation right here blew my mind, y'all, because Jesus. I looked at it. I looked, Jesus said, who? <laughs> Talk about it! <laughs> Will you who to Will Jesus? You who? Wow. Oh, come on! You are who? When you are a who, maybe he has heard you because you're a who to him. You gotta have some faith. 
And faith looks like something. Yeah. It really does. Faith looks like Jesus. Mm. So she, let me finish, let me finish. So she finally got tired, y'all, of being rejected. Uh-huh. She got tired of being rejected. You got to get tired, y'all. Talk yes. about it. Of saying, God, why do I pay tithes? Come on, Pastor. But that blessing Come on. that overflows me, because you said the windows of heaven were open and pour me out a blessing there was no room to receive and my house is still empty. Jesus. Talk about it. Because the blessing has an overflow. Has anybody asked that? Yeah, my God. Has anybody? Are you concerned? That the word of God is true because we're not connected. Look, you don't see the word of God is true. You don't see it as something you need to set your life up by. You just want to say, I got up there, I uttered some word. They told me I was saved. And then I went on to live my life. But I got to get connected. You got to get connected. My God. You got to get connected. Come on. So then, I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. She got sick and tired of the rejection. Because now it wasn't just society anymore. This was Jesus. And I get tired of scripture being true for everybody else. Maria, but it's never true for me. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I, I, I get tired of all the saints telling me what scripture say. But it never works out for me that way. Yes. Right. <laughs> Anybody with me? Come on now. Because you're quiet. Anybody with me? Yes, yes you are. I, 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 I get tired of scripture saying this, but I could have never promised to be an eye. Come on. So is the scripture not true? Oh my God. Is it possible that when I was born, January 25th, 1961, that all of a sudden, scripture became not true? <laughs> or is it me? Have I not done? I uttered the words, but he says, believe in your heart is the other part of that. And the part where we don't complete is to believe in your heart. Because mm -hmm. if you believe in your heart, mm -hmm. the very reason why I won't even come against you is because it may be at the time that Jesus calls the church up. Mm -hmm. It sets my standard. I won't even, I'm not even holding nothing against you because I can't afford to have you as a talent. When he calls me up. Amen. Y'all not hearing me. Amen. And I know that's not true because all of y'all, most of y'all got a list. And you're still working. Come on. Come on. You, you're not connected. You haven't believed God. You're not connected. Most of you still trying to get that people. They got you 40 years ago. You still hold that love from family members because of how they treated you. But the love of Christ So she got sick and tired. She got sick and tired. Okay, she said, Jesus don't know me. Uh, Jesus, Jesus is like, okay, uh, man, Lord, what did I do? What did I do? But somehow she knew because she had her moment of reckoning. She had a moment of reckoning, and all of us know that. All of us have our moment of reckoning. But nobody should have to tell you. A prophet should not have to come along and, and prophesy or prophesy to you. Talk about it. Quit making yourself available for soothsayers. Most of them are nothing but soothsayers. Yeah. They predicted the future. Jesus said, they never predicted the future. Y'all not talking back to me. Quit subjecting yourself to people who are going to speak things. That God was willing to speak to you first to get in relationship with Him. Yeah. Yeah. These prophets, if they will prophesy anything, it's either going to correct us and you're going to be mad. Yeah. It's either correcting us because God didn't put His hand on something, yeah. or He's warning us right. to say, if you don't get it right, right. you're going into captivity. Right. That's what the prophets did. Yeah. The prophets didn't say next year, this time, you're going to have a three court, uh, five bedroom house with a garage and four kids. So prophecy started changing. Yeah. Am I right, Elder Honest? Prophecy started changing. And all of a sudden, because the Spirit of the Lord wasn't really resting on these people. 
people. They became like the prophets of Baal. Talk about it. They prophesied things that bring them glory. They prophesied, where do you get that information from? Because God is not interested in giving nobody that information. You want a three bedroom house, go work. Yes. <laughs> you don't need nobody to come up to you and say that. And then say, send $400 to my ministry. And you get that call because I'm going to break my sweat with this cloth. And if you put this cloth on your child, they're going to get healed. But what if your sweat ain't home? Now you just gonna spread your bacteria and germs and viruses onto my child. Talk about it. But these people are prospering. I just 
just gave them to Jesus. Yeah. Take your insulting action. Yeah. I just dismiss myself to turn it over to him. Yeah. And whatever he sees fit to do with anything is on him. Because yeah. I live my life Come on. with the expectation yeah. of a soon coming Savior. Yeah. When we're not connected, we do crazy stuff. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Think about the craziest thing you've ever did in your life and the consequences that came so out. Yeah. Mm. That's so true. You weren't connected. Amen. Y'all got quiet. Yes, 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 That's what you're talking about. Yes, yes, Some of the craziest yes, stuff we've ever done is Talk the about sign. it. You weren't connected. Oh, yeah. Talk about it. We don't want nobody to tell us that because if I went around this room, oh, I'm saved. Sanctified and free. But are you connected? Come on. Yes. But are you connected? Are you a who? Or somebody. Or somebody. My, 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 my. Oh, that's good news. Yes. Because when she got tired of being sick and tired, and when Jesus is ignoring you, talk about it. You don't want to do something. Talk about it. He said, who touched me? Mm. Somebody touched me. Man, he had no expectation of any kind of healing that left him, the virtue that left in him that day. Why was he not aware? Come on. When power like that leaves you, Come on, Jesus. Pastor. Come on. And he even knew this is something different. He was not aware that he didn't understand something like this was getting ready to happen. That his virtue, his power left his body? My God. Oh, everybody else had to go get tea. Mm -hmm. Go sit down and eat tea and crumpets, because I can't do nothing for y'all right now. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> y'all don't know what this woman's radical praise has just done. My God. I know one minute she was whatever she was. She was a woman or somebody. But oh. somebody said it's shifting. <laughs> That you wasn't connected, you gonna miss this blessing. Because if you don't feel ashamed to say that you weren't connected, you can't get this blessing. Because it's starting to shift for her. Because see, she left her pride, she threw her pride away. That thing came down, she came in between all the people, she bent down as far as she could go, and everything. Her body was full of pain, but she was no more ashamed. She was more ashamed of what she was than what she needed to do. Over, despite the pain. Yeah. Radical, y'all. When you get through crying about what you're going through, y'all don't understand. Y'all don't understand. I'm not meant to understand. It's your stuff. Oh. What are you going to do what's necessary for you? Y'all right. right. don't know why I do what I do. Yeah, but Jesus does. And are you a who oh. and a somebody to heal? You better be careful. Yes, she took all her pain. Do y'all hear me? She took everything. Yes. Society has said, don't touch her. I'm pretty sure that when she got up in that crowd, a wave happened. Come on, Pastor. Because y'all know, y'all will back up and back away because they got the cooties. Yes. And if we think somebody got the cooties, yes. whoa, we'll back up. Yes. We'll back up. See, that was the one time, y'all better hear me. God's going to let that thing work for your favor. That's been working for your bad this whole time. Uh, because he took that same thing that nobody wanted to be around you. Nobody wanted to deal with you. Everybody knew what was going on. Everybody knew why it was going on and all of that. Then he took that and worked it to her favor. Because I'm sure that by the time she got into the crowd, they started moving on themselves. Uh -huh. Some moved to the right, some moved to the left. But never mind, they moved enough because they didn't want to be touched, you know. Uh -huh. they didn't by her. Uh -huh. And so while everybody was trying to touch Jesus, touch his hand, touch his head, touch his shoulder, touch his back, she said, I, I got it now, Jesus. I got it now. I'm a sinner, and I'm a sinner, but I won't be saved by your grace. I understand now. They trying to touch your hand like they were today, but I just want to touch her. Uh, I think it touches you. Prayer call. 
because she understood uh, how the significance uh, of that thing that was wrapped around him. She understood him and she said, I don't do it. I don't mess up. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to touch the thing, Jesus. That touches you. I'm going to touch. Uh, you know that girl did was in place ever since the big. I think it was around the 18th chapter when Moses was given the instruction on how
But if you look like an apple, taste like an apple. Come on. It is. Oh, you apple. Apple. Amen. Amen. So today, this should end it for you. I'm not a who. I'm not a And I'm not a somebody. Not after today. Way, when they were talking in the front of the church. My God. And they said, wait a minute. Before I gave my, I just gave my ideal to you. I gave my emotion to you. But when I walked away from that emotional experience, I found out I didn't have no power. I found out I was a who. And still a somebody. Yes, God. Yes. But not today, God. But not today. Not today. Not today. Not today. Because I believe you today like I never believed you before. Yes, Lord. We gotta learn you all. Don't pity pack this thing. Don't play with this thing. This thing is not entertainment for you. Come on. That is not a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that you make when you get a hankering for. Come on, peanut butter. It's not baloney that you fry when you want to taste of the good old. Man.